Well, since January last year, the JSC has risen by superlative 38.7% to an all-time high. And of course, today is shooting the lights out once again, despite it totering a global economy. And now, surprisingly, two-thirds of this return is explained by just three stocks. Richemont, Nasbas and SAB Miller, which contributed a staggering 25% to the 38.7% return. Now, this creates a real quandary for investors, because if you weren't invested in these three stocks, what would uh, your returns have looked like? And where to invest now going forward? Jeff Blount, the CEO of Canon Asset Management, is uh, here to discuss this uh, phenomenon. Uh, is it a phenomenon? I mean, the, the fact that we saw uh, the three stocks on the JC really uh, powering the returns we've seen of almost 40%. Uh, it's both phenomenal, it's interesting, it's confusing, and it's perplexing. Uh, and I think it's very hard for investors to uh, make sense of this type of market. Uh, as you said, you've got a world economy and a South African economy that's struggling. Earnings growth is coming through, but the man on the street is struggling, yet markets keep powering on up. And uh, I suppose people say, well, there's a disconnect. You know, mm -hmm. The real world is not matching the financial world. Um, and interestingly enough, if you strip out the effect of breweries, Richmond and Naspas, then for the last 20 months, returns are about 13% for the Ulster Index, which is a little bit more sane given the economic backdrop. Uh, you know, the world, we shouldn't be we're seeing these kind of returns from equities at the moment. But it is these three shares in particular that are driving them. So specifically when it comes to these three mm. stocks, I mean, obviously Rand Hedge is the word that, that comes to mind mm. right now. Do you, do you think that's been driving investment into them or is it specific growth stories? Uh, I mean, obviously Nasbass, mm. Tencent is, yeah. a, is another story there. But, but what are your thoughts in terms of the, the, the investment case that investors uh, have been seeing mm. and driving these stocks to, to levels that some see as very as dizzying right now? Yeah, in fact, it's not just these three stocks. The market at the moment seems uh, there's, a, there's a, a, an enamorment of markets falling in love and investors are falling in love with large cap industrial stocks in South Africa. Uh, some of them are rand hedge, some of them aren't. Um, but the characteristic of these businesses is that uh, they're large, they do have some rand hedge, uh, investors love them. And while they are great businesses, I mean, these are phenomenally high quality businesses, we think to our mind they're very expensive. So what you've got is you've got expensive stocks, that are getting more expensive based on earnings prospects or belief that they're going to keep delivering earnings into the future. And we've seen this movie before. Um, you know, you have great businesses, uh, people get excited, they push the prices up, and as long as these companies keep delivering, uh, then you're not going to get a disappointment. But they price for perfection. Uh, and uh, I think that there will be some kind of disappointment going forward. And that's not a negative number. You just don't have to hit your, your forecast earnings growth numbers and there's a wobble in the share price. But it's not just these three stocks. In fact, if you take large cap industrials in South Africa and the 12 largest industrial stocks in South Africa, they alone contributed um, 30, uh, I think it's about 34% mm -hmm. to the market return. If you take that out, in fact, the JSC as a whole gave a 5% return. Uh, we estimate that uh, of the stocks that delivered, that, that of these 12 industrial stocks uh, uh, at the moment, most of them are on aggregate up to 50% overvalued. Now, we're not doom and gloomers here, but we're just saying these are expensive stocks that are driving the market up. Now, the quandary for investors is, well, if you accept that they're potentially overvalued, do you get off that bus or not? Because uh, the market keeps railing, and if you don't own this narrow band of stocks, the rest of the market returns are actually not great. Mm -hmm. um, but you're buying something that we think is increasingly dangerous from an investment perspective. Uh, you know, investors, your ultimate return is determined by the price you pay. If you overpay for an investment, no matter how great the theory, and the, the story is, no matter how great the stock is or the business, if you overpay, you are going to be disappointed. So we're, we're, we're particularly nervous about this market at, this, at the moment. Jeff, how would you say the, the, this group of companies compares to uh, the likes of 30 years ago? Because here you're looking at mm. Nasbers, uh, a media company, a mm. luxury groups company, as mm. well as a beverage or brewery company. Yeah. How would that compare to 30 years back when mining as well as um, manufacturing was the corner of our economy? Yeah, um, uh, look, the lists change quite dramatically over time in terms of the leading businesses or the market cap. In fact, uh, you know, South African breweries now is, is significantly bigger than Anglo-American was even just five years ago. Um, but, uh, you know, so while the lists of the 20 largest or 10 largest companies on, South, on, the, on the exchange change uh, over time, uh, what you find is that there has been a shift, I suppose, in uh, the global and the South African economy where IT and services are becoming a bigger component, MT and Vodacom. So you're getting new technologies, NASPAS to Tencent coming through. I suppose Richmond, you can argue, is a luxury goods business, and mm -hmm. uh, so at least they make something. Uh, breweries makes beer um, and they make something but you are getting a shift more to service-based companies that are increasingly components of, of the index but it's just you know it's interesting um, 
uh, you know, we did an analysis and over the last uh, 30 years of the top 100 stocks that were on the market 30 years ago, there's only 15 left in terms of market cap. So mm -hmm. things change. Mm -hmm. um, and, uh, you know, and right now, these stocks are easy to own. They love to own. You, you can find reasons to own them. But I'll hark back to the construction bubble in 2005 to seven when it yeah. was easy to own those stocks. Before, I mean, because mm. this is all you know how the economy mm. has evolved. But before we go to this uh, break, uh, you know, quick one on the on the stocks that make uh, the uh, top performing industrial mm. stocks and the top performing stocks in South Africa. Mm. Where is is there value in any of those? Because I see the likes of BHP Billiton's on that list, Sassel's on that list. If you look at those uh, PE ratios that adjust for mm. the cycle, mm. uh, there are some that perhaps could be fitting into value territory space. Yeah, I mean, look, uh, uh, BHP Billiton we think is value. Uh, we think that Sassel's value. Uh, there's Raynet, uh, we think there's value. So there's a few stocks there. Um, but just by a straight simple uh, PE or price to book or dividend yield analysis, there's only four stocks on that top 20 contributors to market returns that are trading below long run average uh, multiples. So 16 of these 20 Which are the drivers. four stocks before we go to break? Okay, well it's going to be, it's going to be uh, Sassel, BHP, Billiton, uh, Remgro and Raynet. Thanks very much.